Hey, critics! This is what we're calling our fans now, critics. Hey, critics! Welcome to Critic Box, your one-stop shop for some hot goss in the movie, film, Hollywood business. My name is Jared, and I'm joined with the Silk of Cinema, Andrea. How are you doing today? Well, after being called the Silk of Cinema, I am doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> we were you just commenting. I, 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 I'm smelling roses here. Dude. Like, oh, oh, right. Just, mm, mm, just feel oh. the air. Just. <laughs> oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's been, it's been one of those weekends where I'm like, hmm, this industry. And then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm you mean every I'm, weekend, basically. Every weekend, I'm like this industry. <laughs> well, no, it's just, it's, it's. You have to look at the news that's coming down and it's just like, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know why I continue to choose to do this, but I do. And obviously yeah. I love it. And obviously I'm going to read the tabloids and the gossip mm -hmm. columns and be like, well, you have to tell me about what's happening in film and which movies should I go see or not see. And, and then I'm going to look at myself and I'm going to take off my makeup in the mirror and I'm going to cry because <laughs> did I really have to do that? Did I? <laughs> All right. So, so what piece got you off? Uh, got you going this time? Um, it was actually one of the topics that we we're going to discuss. You know, our favorite mm. Hollywood studios. So because we I was just like, well, I should know something about the Hollywood studios if I'm going to talk about this, right? So I, I, I mean, did... that's that's always a light and easy topic, you know, just looking into like, hey, what are these studios up to? What have they been up to? Oh, oh, you know, yes, so... <laughs> yes. that is that uh, juxtaposition of I want to go see these movies. But damn, I, these people behind these movies, there's some of these people behind these movies, some of the people in the movies, yeah. Yeah, so recently it just came out that one of the execs, I think it's in a, a Disney or something, I was just reading further into what he said about, um, you know, movies with all women in it, or mm -hmm. movies with... Um, oh, I think I yeah. know before you talk. Mm -hmm. Yes, we don't, we don't need to call any names, which, you know. Um, no, we can call names. We can absolutely call names. Uh, we'll call a name if you want to call a name. And mm -hmm. um, so basically, I'm just like, you know, some of the biggest movies that we've had have had featured all female casts or cast with or with cast with people who weren't um, who are BIPOC. And, and it's just like, why would and, you say that? You know, you're responsible for yeah. educating millions of people, not just one kind of person. And I'm, I, and I'm like, I, I've watched some of the things that you've made. Like, can I take that back? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, well, and, it, and it's also... Um, and I think we could say, well, we know the studio that he works for and everything. And just like, what, what was the point? What are you gaining by saying, hey, do I have to make a film that's all women? Do I have to have like an all black cast or whatever to make a movie right. and everything? And it's like, no one was asking the question. Like, no one is asking, you know, like, you're giving an answer to a question nobody was asking. It was just like, like, no, you don't, you don't have to, but we should, we can, we underrepresentation has been a problem for since fit cinema existed. Um, and like, and yeah, you no, you don't have to have an all female cast, but you can make an all female cast and the movie's still going to be awesome, you know, but it's like, but it, it, it's like, no, you're, no one's forcing you old white director. Like, but I mean, it's, it's a obvious suggestion that, Hey, yeah, you should have variety other than white folk in your, in your cinemas. Yeah. And it, but it's just like how, how do you get to a position like that where you're making movies for millions of people who come mm -hmm. from different backgrounds and then just say that and like you said there wasn't a question that was asked it was a separate yeah. of a conversation that he was having with someone that took out and obviously it got the they got the headline because it was the most salacious headline or the I mean a bit of a hatchet point. job day for the headline but right. you know. But I'm just like, how, how do you say these things? And it's just like, what really happens in the back rooms? And how can I stop myself as a consumer from watching movies from this particular, that's made or involving this particular person? And the fact is, I'm not. So mm -hmm. 
I'm just a little yeah. ashamed. I'm, I'm, I'm a little ashamed. It's it's like okay, look, old white guy, you're not supposed to say the quiet part out loud. You know, it's like I I know on purpose for you know in the past y'all just been like we don't need that many women in this or like oh we don't need that you know he can just be the the best friend you know and we know that it's happened throughout the last few, number of decades but uh we're finally changing that and that's a, a wonderful thing and then you're just getting offended because maybe your past movies have been all white and all men you yeah, know like what's like again it's like where, where are you coming from this i just think if you're gonna say the, the loud part out loud the the quiet part out loud if you're gonna do mm-hmm. that i mean you're trying to kamikaze something so, yeah like um, come on man are you expecting not trying to kamikaze anything like he's trying to get on boards and make movies and make more decisions so it's just like ah, okay yeah. it's like <laughs> mm, okay great you're just just voicing that we have more of people like you that are still out there making decisions and out there great right great and when another like crazy crazy conversational news judy delpley 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 Delphi, um, she was a uh, Karen Culkin's uh, co-star, and and mm. they were doing a pun. Uh, they were doing a press junket on something, and she said that she wished that she was she wished that she was African American because as an African American person, they could we could say apparently here's here's the breakdown. We could say things and not have any pushback or backlash, but as a mm. woman in the industry, it's impossible for her to do so. And it's just like, first off, how are we the most two picked on? <laughs> <laughs> subjects in what it yeah. comes to this industry and three where are these outlandish <laughs> off the wall like idiots, you drop. just saying those words like it, okay like right. and Karen is just like oh uh, even Karen Culkin is like I'm just gonna <laughs> just, <laughs> just slide out of this one Right, everyone was just sitting there, like, okay, she's really opening her mouth on this, and you know, in the in the, the and, things that were said, the things that were, have been said in the industry, I don't think like you know this really is all that like crazy or um, harebrained, uh, but saying it, it's just some you people it? just and like to talk. Are you human? Do you have a human experience? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> are you living on this planet with us, or is it? Yeah, uh, and you know, what? I think the answer is uh, no. No, they're not. They are absolutely in their own world, uh, in the cavernous world of being up their own ass, and they are not aware of what they're saying out in public. And or it may have just been a thought they had, and they're like, "Here, let me put this out in public," and then nobody wants that thought. Like nobody right. wants your opinion on this. Nobody wants to hear this. Like if you don't have anything to add then you're taking away and we don't maybe hold back that thought right i mean it was a clip from 2016 so obviously i mean it it wasn't all that recent but the fact is that eight now years ago yeah out. yeah but now it's coming out and in conjunction with um you know the 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 opinion of that executive that you know why should he or just even questioning that fact i think mm-hmm. to, just together i mean <laughs> It's a lot. Just, it's, it's a yep. bit much. It's a bit, bit much. Just um, a lot. Yep. It's one of those, like, I'm going to close out this news article and I'm just going to take a little walk. I'm just going to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Refresh well, the text. and. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now, since we're on the subject of these studios, um, right. there is what, four, five big conglomerate studios with many sub production companies like uh, underneath each uh, uh, each umbrella there's a lot out there and a lot of them that are pretty much dictate the the what's dictate the theaters dictate what's in the cinemas what's getting made what's not getting made they're the the puppet masters one can say Our but lives, that's what you're looking for a lot alive yes yes and let me hold on. Let me list them off. Hold on. I had I had a list over here. Let's just talk about movie studios. Let's see. We have Paramount, Lionsgate, Walt Disney. Nope, nope. These are hold on big ones. No, we need film studios. These are production companies. Where are they? Here we go. The big five. We have NBC Universal, Paramount Pictures, Warner Brothers, Walt Disney, and Sony. Those are the five big umbrellas that everything else goes underneath and these are old boys uh these have the og original been around forever 
Yep, 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 yep. And yep. is there any that stands out for you that you're like, mm, you know what? Those, are those five? Yeah. I was. How gonna, are these feeling? I wasn't going to choose one of those five. I mean, exa- okay, what, who are you going to choose? Because we are talking about it before. I just like, oh, which production company do you like? Okay. <laughs> if mm-hmm. we're talking like Marvel, <laughs> you know I'm going to disturb. Good. <laughs> that is my point. Okay, so... Um, if and talking- I'm going to make peace. See, you disturb, you disturb the water, I placate the water. So let's okay, go yeah. ahead. That's it. <laughs> That's how we work. We have our roles. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to type cast myself into something here. Mm-hmm. Um, if we're talking like recent movies, modern movies in the last 10 years, last decade, mm-hmm. I'm going to give that to A24. Like I said, A24. I said a couple of times while we've done this, I love what A24 mm-hmm. does. It's not a studio. It's a production company, right? So Production company, yes. Okay. So if we're talking studio. God, mm-hmm. why did you just relegate it to studios? Give me the options again. Okay, you know, out of the five, you know, you can say anything you want. You can just say like, forget no, the no, studio. No, Let's talk about the production okay. company. All right, here are the five. Here are the five: NBC Universal, okay, Paramount, okay, Warner Brothers, WB, okay, Walt Disney, Disney. and Sony. Sony. Mm-hmm. Okay, if we're talking studios and not production companies, I'm gonna have to give it to Paramount. Yeah. Paramount. Paramount. I, I feel like their stream, like right now, their streaming platform is the only platform that makes sense. And if we're talking about the five majors that have that are like Goliaths and monoliths in this industry, and they tend to choose movies that, or they tend to distribute, make movies and, and green light movies that are well rounded. Yeah. I'm gonna give. I, 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 Tell some I, whole I, ass stories. Yes, they tell stories not just of, of one specific type. Well, we know we're gonna make money type deal. They try to, they try to give us. They run the whole gamut of of things that people could watch and be like, okay, well, maybe you're you're, you're gonna like what we try to do with this one, or if not, uh, um, we're, we're we're gonna try this. We're gonna you know flip the genre and try something else instead. I'm I'm trying to see which ones Mean Girls. I mean, mm-hmm. that was an instant classic when it came out. And, you know, we, we've had the musical and we've had the revival of that since then. It has impacted at least the, the tweens. They love it. Um, my niece loves it. She she knows basically every song coming off of it. Like, that is an impact in the industry, you know? And they keep... Mm-hmm. And they keep consistently putting out movies like that, and I, I or they green light movies like that. I'm not going to talk about the Quiet Place again because you know I love it, but they did take a chance. Oh, on- we we love it. You're not. Yeah, I mean we equally love Quiet Place. Uh, I am looking forward to three. I, well, quiet Place Day One. Um, the quiet. The quieting. If the wife would allow it. I I think we should just like. Mm-hmm. All the you know I'll be the third wheel. Okay. I was, okay. I okay. Was, It'll be the three of us. We'll have a good time. Exactly, I love. You, yeah, you'll love her. Um, let's see. Uh... And also, I mean, if we're still looking at Paramount. They have, if we're, they have just the variety. I mean, the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, the Top Gun franchise, Star yeah. Trek, the Cloverfields. Yeah. Um. What else? I mean, you have classic Ben Hur, Ten Commandments. Uh, Airplane, one of the finest parodies that was ever created. Airplane is in there. I mean, the Naked Gun. I mean, they have just enough for something for everybody. Shane. Oh, that's a good. That's a good old Western. Shane. I mean, Paramount. Well, hit. Yeah. I mean, I, they just have. I just. I think there's just some level-headedness out there that in that particular company that has lasted through the early 1900s when the company was first established like Mm -hmm. they they just and their remakes their franchises like it's not just the originals because beverly hills cop was amazing right off the top it was like it it took the audience it took audiences on a ride and they're like oh no we definitely like this ride and paramount did take a chance on eddie murphy off um (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know oh no save us the end and that jacket that I mean, the Axel Foley jacket, 
Mm, mm, that 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 set a trend in the eighties. Like that right. hit that mm, that hit that note just right. Right, but the fact is that when they decide that they're going to do a franchise, mm-hmm. the the subsequent movies, the following movies in the franchise are actually equally as good or get yeah. as um as positive ratings as the originals in there does. Like the the there doesn't seem oh. to be a slip with them, you know. Beverly Hills Cop Three is, I mean, two. I don't really remember that much about it. Beverly Hills Cop Three that hit all the notes. Like what? that was. What about it? Um, that was the one where they were in the um the the amusement park, right? Beverly Hills Cop Three. Yeah. It's not even that they were there in the amusement park, but like, what about it? Like, how did it hit all the notes for you? Like, what made you? It okay. It still had the comedy. It still had the seriousness. It had enough action. It had. Uh, it brought back uh, a lot of the original. Um, a lot of the characters that were in there, like uh, Serge. Um, just everything was. Uh, was I don't know. Just Beverly Hills Cop. Just like it held its own. I think. Uh, uh, in terms of the franchise of like sometimes when it comes to a franchise, first one's great. Second one they get a little sloppy on, but third one they come back to just to, to reclaim that franchise. And I feel like that Beverly Hills Cop three was one of them. Yeah, no, I, 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 okay. I, I see what you're saying. It, it gave you all the feels when you needed to have feels. They had fun. And the right. thing about it, especially with a comedy, like a, a comedy based movie is you can't take yourself too seriously. You can oh. have serious moments, but you can't take yourself too seriously. And I, in, and, and again, it was wonderful. Now we'll see how the new one uh, is when it comes out, but I'm excited about it too. Okay. No, and then, uh, okay. That, that's definitely there. I mean, Another point I, I'm going to put in Paramount's basket is that they're mm-hmm. consistently greenlighting movies. They're consistently trying yes. to see movies out, even when there's been a pullback in a recession or a major strike or, you know, people, the, the, the industry is really unstable right now. And a lot of executives don't know what they're going to do or even directors and producers are just like, OK, so what's happening with our livelihoods now? You know what I mean? Like. They consistently try to make deals with other with production companies um, or streamers to put out movies, and it obviously it's a business decision on their end. That's what they do. Yeah. They put movies, and they need to make a certain amount of movies every year to recoup or whatever. Mm. But they 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 didn't. T- I don't. I don't feel like they tightened their belt buckle maybe as other companies did. You know, I feel like they dumped their money into the right places when it came to business. And that's the reason why they can do it, which just shows me like they have smart leadership, you know? Yeah. And like so much of what happens and what comes out today, we're not just looking at like the front facing things on, okay, well, this is what we put out. And so this is what people should be commenting on. We're looking about what's happening behind the screens or what has happened behind the scenes and what's happening behind the scenes in a lot of different companies or in a lot of different entities. It's just like, Really? Ew. You know, it, it gives, you, <laughs> gives you a bad taste in your mouth and you're just like, oh my God. How? Like, it's like seeing a guy with his hat off for the first time. Like, oh, like, really? oh is that what you look like? <laughs> what a- is that what your hairline is? You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> you know? but yeah, but, but, but Paramount has, it's like, hey, we know what it's like being in the theater seats. We know what we want to see on there. And even if it doesn't, like every one of them, like all their movies, they don't have to be Oscar award winners. Right. But they have to be worth the 90 minutes, worth the two hours you're putting into it. And Paramount, I mean, sure, it's all always going to be hit or miss, but they're, 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 they're consistent. They are very consistent. And... They, I feel like when it came to like studios opening up their own streamers, they they hit it right off the top. I mean, it wasn't oh, yeah. priced. They had a wide selection of movies. They have a um, deep catalog. I mean, deep deep catalog because they were able to pull from everything that they've done. Plus, get the distribution rights to a lot of things that they didn't really actually make, but people wanted to see. So now, when you hit Paramount mm-hmm. Plus streaming, you're just like, oh. Okay, well, I can watch this, this, and this, and this. That, and it's you know sometimes this title is available across all platforms. But when you can get it on one platform, and you're paying that one amount per month, as opposed mm-hmm. to having this streaming platform, that streaming platform, this streaming platform, and then you total it all up, and you're just like, oh my god, I have a cable bill again. 
<laughs> like, oh, I have $120 in these, subs- <laughs> these streaming right. bills that I have, right? It's like they actually think about the people that they're in business for, which, you know, is, yeah. you can appreciate that. And so, you look, like, if you look deeper, there might be something that people might be like, oh, my God, really? I mean, oh, par- heebie, jeebie, oh, par- <laughs> no. <laughs> if you look a little bit deeper, but off the, yeah. top, off the cuff and on the surface – paramount well all around you can look at them and be like i like what you put out and you know what it seems like the people like behind the scenes pulling the strings for you are well-reasoned level-headed individuals Mm -hmm. (laughs) that i wouldn't mind having a drink with yeah and that's important to me it's, you know, can you drink with these studio execs, you know? Exactly. In this day yeah. and age in, in social media, we're going to find out. It's your sh- If there's shit in your closet, it's coming on out. Mm-hmm. Time. You know, we, TMZ is not, has been in business for a reason. Okay? Their full-time <laughs> job is to find your shit, shit in your closet. You know? <laughs> throw it out there. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a blind item or whatever. And it's just like, you know, it's kind of, it's dodged all that. I mean, Disney sure hasn't. Disney. Damn, Disney. Look, yeah. I mean, going back from its original founder, you can't dodge all the shit in that closet. <laughs> oh, that, oh, you know, that's why they had to come out with Disney Plus, because they had to use the vault for all the shit they needed to start hiding. They're like, you know, let's get these movies out here. We need to make room in the vault for all the shit we don't want people to know about. It's a big vault, yo. It's, it's a big... lot. It's a lot in that vault. <laughs> I mean, and also, I'm... I mean, Paramount I'm... was founded I'm... May 8th, 1912. I what? mean, you want to talk about a deep catalog? 1912. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm partial to all these studios. I'm I'm definitely yeah. I'm not gonna hate on Disney and I'm not gonna hate on um You w- can hate. And you can hate. You can hate. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm doing a cleanse. I'm doing a cleanse. I've had green it's positivity. Drink. Positivity. I have got incense burning, like I'm do I'm mm-hmm. sitting, yeah, I'm doing a cleanse. There's no non toxic. Mm-hmm. Non toxic. Sa- um, sage your brain. Sage your brain. Uh, uh, well, right. I mean and, I mean, I was so I was gonna say, I mean, uh, because yours is bare, mine was gonna be Warner Brothers. So, <laughs> why do tell? Do tell. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Well, for multitude of reasons. For one, I mean, the animation that Warner Brothers put out in the '90s yeah. was top notch, <laughs> and that was. I mean, I was I was more of a TV guy before. As I was movie and TV all the time. I mean, TV was on at my house all the time mm-hmm. um and so like those tv shows i mean you had your animaniacs uh which was deep in everything they were putting out and hold on i gotta remember exactly hold on what is warner brothers cartoons warner brothers, i should have come out more when it before it came out and started talking about these yes <laughs> i mean they have i mean they're looney tunes like i grew up i mean oh, grew yeah. up on looney tunes and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. um i know duck i mean that whole catalog of everything else they had in there is was it were they also no that went x-men anyway but so warner bros is always there for me and with that water tower is always going to be in my heart and then um can we just go through some of the the top 100 movies that they had all of the lord of the rings on there they had all the harry potter franchise uh you had a bit of a national lampoon you had your gremlins your nightmare on elm street uh, talking about paramount High friday the 13th warner brothers had nightmare on elm street very parallel franchises you can uh you can talk all day on your little shop of horrors your lost boys lethal weapons full metal jacket the original batman your beetlejuice coming out um good fellas like uh uh malcolm x which... of beetlejuice have you seen that trailer yet for beetlejuice yes okay 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 i thought i was the only one i thought oh I was... no 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 we can uh we can absolutely talk about uh we can pause and talk about the beetlejuice uh to now Jenna's this my new favorite vi- girl. I don't care. Jenna? Jenna Ortega? Ms. Oh, yes. Yes. Ms. She's to be loved. She's what? wonderful. Also, no idea how old she is. She could be 14. She could be 24. I have no idea how old she is. I love her. Solid player. All right. Solid actor. She Love her in it. She and yes, she's, she's the reason why I rushed Netflix the day that they dropped Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, on, oh, I mean, there is no other role that she was born to play than playing Wednesday. Now, my fear is that she's going to always be Wednesday, and like she can't get out of that. But uh, because I'm like, no, she's she's better than that. Don't be typecast, but also keep doing Wednesday, but also do other things too. But yes. oh, 
Are you what? I'm watching this trailer right now. Oh, and the fact that we lost Jeffrey Jones, that was, I'm just going to presume that's what the funeral is, because that was the father in Beetlejuice oh, 1, right. and we did lose him recently, a wonderful right. actor. See, Beetlejuice was one of those characters that I, like, typically that I don't really lean in that direction when it comes to those Jack type of genres. Mm -hmm. However, I mean... I'm sorry, what, what are those type of genres? You mean hilarious, um, slight bit of horror to it? Let's just say I have a different kind of sense of humor. Like, I don't always find <laughs> um, if you find it funny, there's a good chance I might not find it funny, okay? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a little bit on the dark comedy sense, but Beetlejuice, I mean, mm -hmm. he actually, the, the original movie, like, it spoke to that little girl in me. It was just like, oh, maybe this is possible. Like it was one, it was like a really good book that was on film. And I think mm -hmm. after this time and with the, with this new version of Beetlejuice coming out, Jenna's in it. I mean, I'm just like that little girl that still lives deep inside of me is just primed to love mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? So oh, yes. like is, I mean, is Jenna Ortega the new Winona writer? Um, because Possibly. they're, yeah, because I'm, I'm pretty sure they're just playing. Uh, they might be playing mother daughter. I'm not sure. I haven't figured out the 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 balance there. But I mean, also in this film, we got Catherine O'Hara, who has to be there uh, without question. You're not gonna have a beautiful movie without Catherine O'Hara. She made it. I mean, you're gonna have Michael Keaton, obviously, and we're gonna get a Willem Dafoe. Michael Keaton, who is in fact my favorite Batman. Anyway, side note, side note. Uh, I mean, no disagreements here. Um, yeah. Also, can I just say, Burn Gorman, a name that you do, that most people would not off the top of their head know who you're talking about, but Burn Gorman, he is one of those that guys of uh, of movie uh, of actors that I love that you know like I you don't recognize the name but as soon as you see him on on set you're like that guy I'm, I'm I love this movie now because that guy's in that who movie is that and that's. Guy? I have he, no okay, in the, in the movie trailer, he was like the pre, uh, the the guy dressed in the priest as at the funeral. And as soon as you see, um, what was it? Pacific Rim. It was um, Charlie Day and the other guy were like the two scientists running around like that. Why? That's that guy. <laughs> see that guy. He's a that guy actor. I love it. That guy. <laughs> yes. yes. Burn go as soon as I saw him in the trailer, I'm like, I love that guy. <laughs> and you, that is my acting goal. Is to be a that guy. You don't. I don't want to have to. I don't have to be an A lister. I don't have to be like you know like like top of the poster. If I can have consistent work as that guy That's in a nice. movie and any movie franchise, whatever. Like you know, we need someone to fill the slot, but like he needs to carry the scene. Get me, get me, Jared. You know, like yeah. that's what I want to be. I want to be that guy. I want to be like a Burn Gorman. You know the reason why I think that he is that guy, and it's because his face just blends. It's like, it's a very, it's, he has a very it's sharp, it, it sticks out, but blends in. Yeah. Yes. Like that if is, he wasn't was, an actor and he was just a dude at a bar, like you wouldn't think you wouldn't look at him twice. Like but the fact, everyone is trying to be Brad Pitt when it comes to being mm -hmm. an actor, like a Brad Pitt or a George Clooney. No, you know what? Mm -hmm. I think the new level of acting is being that guy. Everyone yeah. who's an actor, don't shoot for stardom, shoot for stable work <laughs> and becoming that guy. My dream is all right, in this industry. Money. I don't need limelight. I need consistent work. And if I could you be need, that consistent some work, benefits, some health, some dental, some mm -hmm. vision, you know, that guy. I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, at our house, we have one bathroom, and we have a dream of having a second bathroom, but right. that costs money. And you right. know what would help us afford that? Consistent work. That exactly. would help me out. Like, what if I, if I do one movie every five years because it was a huge movie? Great. But then what am I doing the other four and a half years that I'm, you know, I'm not working? If I'm in like in every film for like one scene here, one scene there, one scene there, a couple scenes there, whatever, boom, that's consistent pay, baby. Yes. No, 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 it's definitely. It's just this. Okay. Well, this acting game is hard, right? So it's just like, even if it you want to do movies or even if you want to do, if you, if you want to do film, I mean, like there's a way just to try to make it like if you're getting the parts can if you've made it to a point in your acting career where you're getting the parts and mm -hmm. people in certain rooms are seeing you or the casting directors know you and be like okay we can submit this person for that know that they will do their job and carry that scene or whatever if you've made it to that point in your career then bit parts is okay because yeah those bit parts that they're giving you at, at that point in your career they're pivotal 
bit parts yeah. and not just filler throw away anybody could have done that you know just like bumped up a background to say that line you know right but the key but the key to you being in those parts is the fact that you can blend into whatever that filmmaker is doing so they can just trust the fact that you could be that pivotal plot pusher catalyst moment and then the plot can push and catalyst can the the plot can push on you Mm -hmm. could drop off and you've done your job and their movie usually hinges hinges on the protagonist killing that person or finding it all out, or you're the key to the you're the, yeah. you're the missing piece of the information. You're filling that gap that, that they needed, right. or like you're the linchpin to just take them into the into the direction of the rest of the film or whatever. Like right. that clutch is a, sweet a clutch spot. character. Yes, yeah. that is the sweet spot for an actor. Mm. I mean, or unless you're going to do leading man roles and then, you know, the whole movie or the whole the whole production is on your shoulder. And that's a different type of pressure. I mean, that's, that's a different type of actor. That's that's a whole that's a whole. Lot. And then, like I said, once you get once you do that role, then it's like, OK, and you're in that character. Everyone's like, I'm going to need a break before the next one that you're going to lead. You know, right. and, like, and if it's always leading, there's only so many leads that you, that, you know, for, for movies. But if there's yeah. like, hey, we need like a clutch actor. We need to not even worry about it. We know they can do it. Like that's, mm, that's its own pocket. And I would love like, to be in that pocket. recognize you, but not know where they recognize you from. And they're going to be thinking about that one particular scene in your movie. It's, it's, it's ingenious marketing. That's if what people that- are thinking of your name, they're like, ah. Uh, uh, he, right. he played this guy in, in this movie or like, oh, he was that character in that movie, whatever. Like, you know, yeah. they may not never know your name, but like yeah. when they see you, they're like, I know that guy. Right. And the fact is, if that's if that's the type of conversation that you're getting surrounding the scene that you've done, that means people believed it. People believed mm-hmm. it so much that they forgot that they forgot who you were. They remember this scene. They know they've seen you in other things, but you are so damn good as that. That that's acting that's acting 101 that. is they're fucking that movie yeah yeah every i mean the the best acting teachers i've ever had were the ones that said believe your bullshit like acting is <laughs> acting is bullshitting we're, okay, we're, we're playing maple leaf we're playing pretend just, but if you can make people believe that believe what you're saying is true like if you believe what you're saying is true and if people believe what you're saying is true even though you're just making up this whole thing that's like uh, that's acting We're going to disagree there. Oh, really? We're going to disagree. I mean, yes, to a certain extent, you do have to believe it. But mm-hmm. you're not making shit up. I mean, you're drawing from real life or you're drawing from your experience or you're drawing from somebody else's experience. I mean, but to a certain extent, yes, you are making yeah, yeah. things up. But exactly. Yeah, believe, yeah, but you're right. Believe your bullshit. Believe your bullshit. Believe your bullshit. <laughs> and that's why... <laughs> like, um... The best advice I got from an mm-hmm. acting thing, I, I have these little things on my in my Instagram feed that come up. And I don't remember who said it, but they, they were like, um, you know, when you when you have a character, it was very, when you have a character. When you, you wanna, have a character. You, you want to start not only thinking about how does that character feel and how would that character react in that situation in any given circumstance, but mm-hmm. what you also want to do is to begin to think like that character. What would that person's thoughts mm-hmm about that situation what would that bring to the surface um yeah sorry, was, uh, uh, producers yeah. can we have got me at any can time we have some classical <laughs> music under what she was just saying in post can we just add that under there and then we can just have the dollar master class right <laughs> <laughs> it'll be 69.99 please thank you okay yeah per lesson <laughs> yeah you know what i mean but it, it, it was one of those things and i i, I feel like he, he thinking like that particular character makes you like one of those clutch actors in that scene and it gives you that that guy quality every yeah, um, yeah. Uh, being able to say like if they're like hey we need uh we need a solid character to swing this story or to, to fill this plot hole or da, 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 whatever to drive this whatever but Wait. you're not gonna be the main person but you're gonna be the most mem- you're gonna be a very memorable character in this movie like right. boom that's like that's a pocket you want to get in. That's a Burn Gorman. That right. is a Kevin Pollock. My that's my go to number one. That guy of like who you look up Kevin Pollock. You're like that guy. That you know, like that's that's what I would love to be. Is that 
Right. So wait, did, did WB do Beetlejuice? Is that WB it? did yeah. Beetlejuice? Well, Speaking of great cartoons of the '90s, Beetlejuice yeah. was a fantastic. Was one of the few like, oh, that was actually a really good cartoon uh, version of that. But yep, Beetlejuice is Warner Brothers. <sighs> Yeah, and also my wife used to work for Warner Brothers, and she worked in the DVD section, which is why we have a giant briefcase filled with DVDs and Blu-rays. And thank you, oh, all Warner Brothers movies. Um, some of them are traded because she she knew other other friends and other like a uh, department because you know like when I worked at a brewery, I knew a lot of people that worked at other breweries. So same thing right. with her, like she worked at WB, but she knew people at Sony. Like she knew people that were at Paramount and stuff like that. And so and they kind of switch and traded and you know because you always have like marketing DVDs and Blu-rays, you're always passing around. So we got a bunch of those, and so we love them all. So but, I mm -hmm. mean, how big is the suitcase? It will. I will show you. I call it, it's a big metal briefcase. It's, I call it a drug lord's briefcase. I mean, it's like, I mean, enough obviously to have like DVDs like stacked vertically, but it's like, I mean, a good size one. Like if I I could have DVDs in there, or I could have cash or cocaine. Either one of the three is what could fit into this suitcase. So you know what? I'll take the cash in the movies. You keep the cocaine. We can work this out. Okay, just give me measurement. Hey, with enough cocaine, you can write. A, you can write your own movies. So. Um... <laughs> Yeah. history of hollywood uh you know i i feel i feel i feel like you know before before we delve down that very shady street um mm -hmm. <laughs> let's get back to warner brothers we can go to warner brothers this, and their impact on the industry mm -hmm. now what i didn't know about warner brothers to just recently is that they actually the company was actually the pioneers of the talkies so oh, really it, the whole um, era of movies and films where we had silent films and, you know, the, mm -hmm. it, to if, they, if the actor wasn't that person and exceptionally good at expression, yeah. um, and, you know, get, getting the story across with their, with, their, with their face and stuff and their body. I mean, your Charlie Chaplin's, you know, exactly. yeah, your uh, yeah. Buster Keaton's, yeah. Yeah, if if you weren't one of those people, and then you know they had to flash the dialogue on the screen for that little second, and you know it was still like a like right, it was dramatic piano filmmaking. But um, Warner Brothers they just pushed the industry forward and gave us the talkies, like the synchronized sound, and it's just like wow, late twenties, you know? early thirties, yeah. They took a big leap. And the funny thing is, people in the industry thought they were crazy for even going in that direction. Like, this is never going to work. How do you mean? Like, me mind. Sir, do you see this going on? Do you see what he's trying to do? With our <laughs> it's taking away the art from the cinema. Being able to hear the dialogue. <laughs> yeah. And, but they did it. And you know what? It, it was one of those great moves where you, the rest of the industry followed suit because... Mm -hmm. It was something that they knew they needed, but didn't know how to figure out how to do it. And Warner Brothers took that first leap in figuring out how to do it. And now it may have not been perfect right off the top. But Never is. Did it, and, you know, the industry hasn't looked back. Nope. And then now when you have people saying Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Go no, 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 what, what? Is, is feeling that's coming from Warner Brothers. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Right. Are They're like fun. Oh. Warner Brothers is fun. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. This accent's not edge. <laughs> now since we're going on to different uh, uh different studios that have different franchises i want to take a a deep dive if you will if you want to come with me deep dive into this because we have boom 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 three movies that are coming on to the tail end of a very established long franchises oh my god we, i think i'm gonna need we, a life jacket i know get ready uh if you're not a sci-fi fan you're gonna tune out i need a life jacket that's it okay so <clears throat> we have ghostbusters we have alien mm. and we have planet of the apes mm. three established franchises now alien and planet of the apes obviously coming in a bit stronger um uh yeah, in terms of numbers behind that. them yep <laughs> but um hold on it goes with do 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 one two three four five this is the let's, let's start off with ghostbusters um because frozen empire has been out for a couple weeks now oh, enough boy. time for a number of people to go see it myself excluded but um it is the fifth one in a franchise. Um, and it's, let's just say, lukewarm response. 
how lukewarm are we talking about? It's I mean, no, no, no one's saying no one's saying it's a bad one, but it is saying did it bring anything more to it? Um, so let's just say uh, here. Let's uh, uh, bring up a. Uh, um, this is from. Ah, Ghostbusters 1, classic, 1984, solid uh, solid cast. Um, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is coming off of uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, where which was piggybacking off of the remake of Ghostbusters with the all-girl cast of 2016. So we have had, in the last eight years, three Ghostbusters coming out. One standalone remake with the all-girl cast. Controversial for whatever reason. It was a fun movie. Mm -hmm. But Ghostbusters Afterlife was a more of a heartfelt uh, return to the original franchise, original cast. Now we have Frozen Empire, which is which we can see in this beautiful trailer. Which, by the way, anything that features Patton Oswalt automatically intrigues my eye. Because I love <laughs> Patton Oswalt. But um, this one is... I, I do want to say a little bit of the jumping the shark but it's sometimes whenever a franchise is like everything is like the world will be destroyed or not um it is just a little bit of like kind of like how dc movies always take it to the infinite of like the whole world's gonna die in every movie but then they save the day the whole world's gonna die and then they save the yeah. day i was like okay you can just have a local problem which is what afterlife was <laughs> afterlife was like hey we're just gonna have a local problem for people to figure <laughs> out so what this ghostbusters is is um, you have the original, uh, three out of the four of the original cast, um, rest in power, Harold Ramis, um, but three out of four of the original cast, and you have the new kids, like the child of, um, um, right, um, I right now, Harold Ramis, yes, child, uh, supposed to be the child of Harold Ramis's character, and then we also got a Paul Rudd in there, and it's like, what this movie is, is testing, is, is this a viable new franchise can we make a third movie out of this with this cast can we make a fourth movie out of this with this cast this is the litzma test this first one is did it work did people like it this is the second one how do you feel about this one um i'm surprised that it came i'm surprised that they did it i'm really surprised that they did it and i know uh -huh. they're, they're doing it on the anniversary of certain things so you know it has some sentimental value to the people 40 year anniversary from the first you, one. Yeah. You would hope that it has some sentimental value to the people that decided to, you know, green light this one. How do I feel about it as how I actually always generally feel about when a movie franchise such as this one that is. And, and to be honest, I never really enjoyed the Ghostbusters. I, I They're, they're mm -hmm. like mutant Ninja Turtles for me. It was just. <laughs> yeah. It didn't it, connect, you know what I mean? You know, it, it, it connects or it doesn't connect, I get that. It, it wasn't my vibe. I'm much more of a yeah. kind of type of person, but, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. It's not to say I didn't try. So, yeah, yeah, you know, you gave it, um, you gave it the college try. But this this Ghostbusters is like, like, kind of like what you were saying. I mean, like, they just go so big with 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 the with the drama and it's just like oh okay well we've kind of seen this before where it's like if the ghostbusters don't do it well the world is over and it's just like okay it's the same premise fine how are you going to do it differently this time and i mean did i did they really do it all that differently i didn't watch the movie and I, i'm probably this is probably one of those ones that i'm gonna wait till streaming comes out and it's gonna be like one of those like three o'clock four o'clock in the morning deals and um mm -hmm. you know it's dark and no one's around to judge me yeah, and before yeah. i watch this and <laughs> close the blinds it, it, exactly <laughs> and it's not to say that it's bad or whatever it's just that i just don't see how this premise uh premise of the world is going to end if we don't do something is anything different than what they've done before other than the fact that they've added some ice to it <laughs> okay so and you know, it raises the exactly of the question of is this adding to the franchise to the storyline to the quality of it of like oh there's another banger from this franchise or is it oh here's another movie in this franchise I feel and like and then the fact that they're adding in a bunch of mini stay push Mar uh, stay puff marshmallow men uh they brought slimer back and it's like okay are you leaning so heavy on the first one that you can't key. <laughs> yeah all right yeah that was a very good impression of slimer by the way yeah. um maybe want some green high c but um but it's it's 
is it leaning too heavily on the nostalgia and then jumping the shark in terms of the plot line? Like, what, is it adding anything? Like, can you look at this movie standalone and say, man, that was a good banger? Or is it like, it w- would it have even existed if it wasn't because of the other ones? Honestly, I'm going to give the franchise the respect that it deserves. I mean, yeah. we get a call Ghostbusters. It's a- Who you... I mean, it's Ray Parker on. Jr. Even if you weren't alive during the original film, I mean, they've just made it so, so common knowledge. It's just like, it's like saying, I see dead people, right? Like, it's mm-hmm. one of those types of things. But, um, I just, I just feel like it's a, you know, I'm, I'm unimpressed. I'm unimpressed. What? I feel like it's just another film in a, this franchise that they may, you know, find if they find the right writers, may they may have set something up for the following film for the next generation, you know, mm. to have a premise about the Ghostbusters that it, that is really good and that could be lucrative, like kind of like similar to you know Rocky. Rocky Five wasn't great, you know. I mean, you could take your <laughs> picks with the Rockies. Yeah, plenty to choose from. It, rock it, it, it wasn't <laughs> great it, but you know somebody somehow ryan coogler somebody he found a way to step back mm. to rock four and say okay well maybe here's there's a story here and this is why we now have three installments of creed you know so definitely the possibility is there a, a nugget worth tapping into you know is, is, right. there, is there a vein that we've hit that we can like yeah, that we can yeah. On? okay i promise no more. Sorry. Yeah, but, no, but then we could take that and we could transfer it over to uh, the new Planet of the Apes. Uh, producers, may we have the the new trailer for the new Planet of the Apes, please? Um, Kingdom. No, of can the we Planet not? Can we not? Can we stop? Can we stop it right there, please? No, we can't. Yeah! No, no, it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's too late. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay, let me also just say um, this one is the 10th, 10th installment in the history of the planet of the apes that goes all the way back to 1968 charlton heston's golden age and oh here it is yeah yeah i cry i cry every time (laughs) beneath the planet of the apes escape the planet of the apes conquest of battle of rise of dawn of war for kingdom of i mean they could fly they like could eagles fly. But now it is our time. Our time. Is my the voice acting. The voice acting. You know this it. record. Like, what did you get? Early screening? Well, Early copy? Look at this. Huh? Apes will learn high. Will learn. And I yep. will conquer. We'll conquer. Mm. On May 10th. Legend says ape and human lived side by side. Impossible as that may seem. Why do they hunt her? She's smarter than most. The elders. Did not tell us everything Ooh. about this world. <gasps> the elders bend for your king. Ooh. Apes hunt humans. That is wrong. Uh oh. How can we be worse? Get her, get her, get her. Google can stop the rain. Together, you will die. No, together, you will be strong. Ah, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So. I'm emotional. How, have you, I mean, 10 Planet of the Apes, like I said. Starting in 1968, this franchise has gone on for a long friggin' time. Okay, this the, this movie originally came out before Nixon was elected president. All right, that's how long ago this franchise has been going. Now, 
Do we miss the days of guys in 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 ape suits? I mean, I mean a little bit. I miss you sure don't bit. miss the days of Nixon. I don't. Nobody missed the days of Nixon, but <laughs> but I mean, this has been going on, and let's see. I can boil down just about every Planet of the Apes movie into watch some apes smack around humans. That's it. That's just pretty much what most Planet of the Apes movies are: is watch some apes smack around some humans. That's really what they what they all kind of boil down to. But again. They tick the box for a certain people, all right? You know, this franchise, for me, I, this, it never clicked for me, but I know some people that are like, oh, man, let me tell you the difference between Escape from Planet of the Apes versus Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. And, like, they can go on and talking about the different things. I'm like, cool, that's your fan base. People love it. I get it. Let's talk about the more recent adaptations. We're talking the uh, 2000, 2021, 2014, and 2017, which were actually a trilogy, uh, I knew this because I looked it up, of the Planet of the Apes featuring Andy Serkis as Caesar. It was the beginning, like day one, beginning of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, it was a revitalization. That was what Rise of the Planet of the Apes was. Dawn was more stuff happening. War was the final one with, um, spoiler in the end, Caesar dying. And that was, and, and as, as far as we know, that was a nice tight storyline that everyone says those three were great. This one, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, happens 300 years later, like 300 yep. years after day one. So it's all on its own. It's a standalone. It's its own thing. And that I shows don't even... you how good the other ones did for them to even make a decision to give them a standalone Planet of the Apes. This is exactly a brand new one. And this one is going to be the litmus test of we have a world where apes are dominated. Humans are supplicant like they're they're the ones being hunted. Um, does this bring enough? Like, is, it, is this one of those? This is a tester or it's like we know this one's going to be a, a home run. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the thought pattern was with this, but it's one of those like, hey, this franchise, let's throw in another one and see how it goes. On May 10th, I might actually go find out. It, I mean, it looks like it'll be sure as hell be fun, but it's it's one of those like, I hope it's not, doesn't turn into a CGI salad, which sometimes it can easily turn into if you're not, if you don't have a whole lot of a, a strong cast, strong storyline. But this one, I don't know. I saw a lot of, a lot of facial expressions in this one, uh, in the, in the face of the apes, a lot of, and they all came from, and it's exactly, it all They came. look like characters, you know, they didn't look like generally like ape versus ape versus ape. They look like individual characters, very distinct in, in their own. the apes. Yeah, no. Yeah, um, right. Minus Andy Circus, so it's that's <laughs> whoo. Let's see if we can do it. I, I mean, the female the female lead was was serving too. Uh, let's mm -hmm. uh, let's not discount that. I let's mean, let's not discount I, the humans I, in this. It takes okay. It honestly <laughs> takes me a while to get prepare myself enough to say that I'm going to watch the Planet of the Apes. Okay, I always yeah. end up crying. Oh I yeah, always end up crying. I was about to cry during that trailer. The mm -hmm. Planet apes i mean i know it's supposed to be this movie telling a glorious tale of unearthed civilizations fighting for their rights and resisting the you know the dominance of of cultures that maybe don't quite understand them but the fact that you know we're looking at apes <laughs> mm -hmm. these apes straight up apes computer generated to mm -hmm. have the expressions the emotions and the intonations of people mm -hmm. and you think of the people that have been treated in a way that it has been less than hospitable and their cultures you know i wiped out a race or exploited and stuff like that and i'm i, I cry i cry like i i see the real like socioeconomic injustice <laughs> and, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> and i'm like can you just look past that and just enjoy the freaking movie and i see the heart like, there's heart you <laughs> so you're like, okay, you're like let's talk about the story and the fact you know that mm -hmm. this franchise as great as this has been you know has has delved into different topic different topics and 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 gone through civilization of of these apes and how they've lived and i'm just like god damn i see i see deeper and i can't yeah I just, can enjoy it on that level, but I'm one of those people that can enjoy it because I just feel like when it comes to the this, the use of CGI, it's not overdone. It can be, it has, but it's still viable. Yeah, exactly. I mean, 
to the untrained eye, if you're not in VFX, are you really going to know where they really overdid it? No, you're not. No. You're just going to look at those monkeys' faces or those apes' faces and be like, oh, my God, that really looks incredibly lifelike. That, that looks kind of – that looks and dope. Cou- and coupled with the voice acting, it's like bringing life to this character. Exactly. And yeah. I, when the, that's, that's the level that I personally have to approach it on because mm-hmm. – if I go any deeper than that, I'm going to get into topics and conversations about colonization and how... Oh, boy. <laughs> My ancestors. It, not your ancestors. <laughs> there's, there, please, trust me. I mean, the Incas, okay? The Incas were there first. Um, but mm-hmm. it, there is a lot of, of things that I would get into just because they're using apes to tell the story. But yeah, and, and, and so, it looks like it's well done. It looks you could see the hundreds of million dollars that was invested into it. And the fact mm-hmm. that the story is a standalone story from everything that that one poor ape had to go through to get his freedom. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's selling it for me. It, it's, so it's, what you're I th- feel like what we're finding is why this franchise is still alive 56 years later. Because it was based off of a really good book. It strikes such a chord that it still it still resonates. Why? No, 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 no. I know why. I, you were just telling me for the last ten minutes why it uh, still strikes a chord, but I, but it's clearly it's it's showing that it strikes a chord, you know. And so it, it well it does strike that chord, but you just like imaginatively it strikes another chord. Like yeah. what what was the author of what was his name again? Peter Boulay. Peter Bull, I'm... Peter Bull uh, oh, yeah, Peter Bull, Bull yeah. Yeah. Oh no, Pierre, Pierre, Pierre Bull, yeah. 1963, yeah. La yeah. Plantas de Sins. Right. Sometimes the author is a writer. My French is perfect. These fantastical ideas that just mm-hmm. you know they're so out of the box, and people are just like, "Wow, we would have never thought of that." Okay. Yeah. Let's go. You know, and it, like it establishes it yeah, establishes a world of like what happens if we're no yeah. longer the, the apex predator of this planet? What if like our numbers dwindle? We're not the civilization that we thought we were, you know? What right. if another one starts rising up? What do we do? How does it work? Right. And I just think that that idea was just so uh, that was just it was so much grander than anything that we had had at this time and it was just creating a universe that put put everything on its head turned everything upside down and people were just like shoot you know like, we, we could do this and then you had yeah. and heston you know mm. in so his golden shit, era i like character god so, well, he did in his bronze ass skin just damn you all the hell it was like, what mm. it needed at the time. It, yeah. it, it needed a new world where things were completely different from the what they, they saw. It is like that was the epitome of making movies. It was just like, give us something that's completely purely from the imagination that yeah. we don't see that can give us that escape that we need from our daily lives. The book and did that. Is. And then great casting helped the movie did that and this is why we have this franchise going for 56 years until you have people like me who are like well no let's break it down socioeconomically Mm -hmm. i mean because because there's enough of it even if it wasn't talked about before you can talk about it now right but you don't even have to go there you don't the universe itself Mm -hmm. it evokes emotion and feeling into people where it's just like we can we can love it off the fact we can love it or hate it off the fact that it's just this new world mm-hmm. or we can love and hate it off the fact and do in-depth think pieces about what this world may represent to us so i mean it's just i don't know how i feel about it but i'm gonna cry i'm i'm telling you i'm gonna cry i'm preparing myself for the tears it is. I mean, and also, I mean, it, it, in, even in the original Plan of the Ace, the Charlton Heston one, there was a time travel element to that that was not, I mean, there was touch, but yeah, it was like um, he leaves his planet into space and then funky stuff happens and then he lands on a planet that he later finds out was Earth years later. And that's why he had that final scene of like, damn you all to hell, because he sees the Statue of Liberty blown out. He didn't know he was on Earth the entire time right. of, of the original Planet of the Apes until at the end he sees the Statue of Liberty. He's like, we've been on Earth this whole time. We did this, you know? 
Right. And that was uh, and that was a crazy that was a crazy element of that. But now sometimes the other one, I mean, we don't even have to talk about the Mark Wahlberg Planet of the Apes. Nobody needs to talk about was that. A Mark Wahlberg. There was a Mark Wahlberg one, two thousand one. It was hot garbage. It was a pile of two thousand one hot garbage. That's the time travel element we don't need to talk about because it was weird as hell. So for one, it does talk about <laughs> a lovely socioeconomic, like oh, what happens if the civilization topless one rises? But it had that fun sci-fi element too, right? But then right. yeah, two thousand one the end like, really don't, mm, you know, you just... that one it took 10 years for the studios could convince anyone to do another planet of the apes that's how bad that movie was all right but speaking of let's take this moment to transition and go full deep dive into the sci-fi alien which i just recently watched the original one i think it was friday night yeah friday night that? how was it i mean with uh uh Oh my God, Sigourney was Sigourney Weaver. Like hell yes. I mean, nineteen seventy nine Sigourney 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 Weaver. I mean, oh, you're talking the whole cast. Well, you're not talking about Romulus. Oh, we're gonna get to Romulus. Um, we're getting the Romulus because I need to st- because Ridley the, of of all the franchises we talk about, the Ghostbusters, uh, uh, the Planet of the Apes. Alien is the only one that the original director, Ridley Scott, is still hands-on controlling the narrative of and controlling each one, which I wanted to say this in that I wanted to do this in this order because Ghostbusters, still original writers, and so that's why the new ones, and I guess this is why the second one and the, you know, post-era, whatever, um, so they have a little more control over, which is why I'm like, why do we make these choices? The Alien one with Ridley Scott this one um alien aliens alien 3 alien resurrection alien vs predator and vs predator requiem prometheus alien covenant now alien romulus i don't think they allow us to talk about prometheus oh we can talk about prometheus yeah, because um because it's actually a whole, a whole lot of fun run around story okay that i can tell about these in each individual segment so let me get into the first three because that's what because the first three are literally also features Romulus. So, Alien is you know crew coasting through space finds this alien ship, discovers the aliens. The first one that ever comes out, bam, face hugger, chest burster, tracking this down. The cat's safe. That was the whole Alien one. Aliens plural um, came out seven years later 1986 and it's oh no this new colony hasn't been reporting back we've heard some travesty let's go check it out with some mil- some military guys and cigar and a weaver again leave the cat at home and then they go and check out this thing and guess what it's like 10 times more aliens aliens all over the place and that was an action glory so much happened and then alien 3 is oh you can't oh you come back to earth shenanigans ensue there's a half dog alien which we all forget about but yeah that alien wasn't a regular chest burster it got a dog and it was half dog and it was kind of like the godfather the, the third one could we could have done without um but now alien romulus um, which I think we can cut to the trailer right now. Alien Romulus supposedly takes place between Alien and Aliens. It is a 1, 1.5, and then a 2. So this is the 1.5 like in between. What's the differentiation of the plural? Plural, exactly. Oh. I used to be an English teacher, and it's very important. It's, it's pronounced so that. now this one is with Fidi Alvarez... The original director of the uh, the director of the Evil Dead remake. If you know anything about Fidi Alvarez, he is a practical effects man, and I love that. Look at all this. The fact is, I don't know anything about Fidi Alvarez. You're giving me an education on him. I'm giving you the education on him. Oh no, I'm like, oh okay, so he's he's still pretty good to the guy. Ooh, look at that. so the piggyback of this story coming out august 16th this year i can't wait that's gonna be a fun august so 
Um, Ridley Scott was looking at some cut scenes that he had from Aliens. And it was one scene of just like a family running down this hallway, like excited because they're on a new colony and everything, whatever. And it was, it was just a one segment of a cut scene. And he was like, what about, what if we told their story? Like, what about if those people of just like people like, oh, hey, let's go check out this new, uh, colony or this new space station that's out there. And then, what Romulus is about is people going to investigate this supposedly vacated space station. And they're like, oh, hot damn, let's go steal some resources and cargo because, you know, you're in space, you take what you can take. Um, and then they discover, oh, no, a whole bunch of aliens. And... Um, with Fidi Alvarez, he is practical effects, man. Now, I'm not saying this doesn't have any CGI, but he doesn't lean that way. He leans on actual physical puppets. He leans on um, Evil Dead remake, famous for about, was it 70,000 gallons of fake blood that he used? Um, that man knows how to... That's a director that knows how to do lighting, knows how to do the practical effects, the puppetry, whatever, to make it look real, put the fear in you, and it doesn't look weird or stand out, or it doesn't break that that brain thing that we have when we can see shitty CGI, where you're like, that just looks dumb. No, he's good at that. He knows how to sh show parts of a monster where without... Sometimes when you see parts of a monster, it's scary. You see the whole monster, it's not as scary. It's that weird thing that our brain does. And so he's really good at that to the point where um, Ridley Scott has seen an advanced version of this film. And he was like, yes, like, yes, Feedy, like, I love this film. And so really Scott's excited about this new film. I'm so excited he, about I mean, it. Well, he is producing it, so he should be. He is, but exactly, he's producing, but he's so hands on about it, which um, we can talk about in the series. Sure, you have Alien, Aliens, Alien 3. And then you have Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Those are their own two kind of standout, fun little crossover films. And then there was Prometheus and Covenant, which, you know, the saying, oh, this meeting could have been an email. Yeah. Prometheus and Covenant, it could have been a book. All right, I'm, you know, it, it could have been maybe a little mini series. We didn't need these two films. Those movies are banned in my world. I'm, like I'm, he was no, no offense to Ridley Scott, because again, I'm I'm on board with this franchise. You can tell I love this franchise, but it was he was trying to do a lore drop, a lot of backstory, but then also into a watchable two two and a half hours with some action, and it just it got too much. It didn't it didn't really work out. I don't think he had. Okay, well maybe he probably did. I I don't remember. Um, who was the director versus who was the producer and the writer on that one? But mm -hmm. um, I, it's just it's a band. It's a band sci-fi. I love sci-fi. I love the genre. You know, oh, yeah. I, I I grew um, up. I, I go to sleep on sci-fi. I eat, live, eat, breathe sci-fi. Um, mm -hmm. as a, as a consumer, like that's yeah. sci-fi and action are always going to be the odd genres that I go to first and foremost. However, um, yeah, Prometheus is just a dirty Latin word. In my book, it's just dirty. It was, it was a, it was too. It, it didn't work in the typical story arc you do for a movie for for it to be a watchable movie, and then also have enough of the lore dump, like the 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 backstory of the creation of like these oh, these things, and then a Michael Fassbender up here who's just talking, and and then, and then you're like, oh yeah, we also need to have some action for some reason here. Let's just make this ship rolling on its side like a big bagel, and then crushing people. And you're like, it was like, what are we doing here, guys? Like, yeah. like really? That could have been, like I said, a book, or it could have been a mini series that we could at least like, okay, break it up a little bit. Give me, give me, give me these lore in enough chunks and everything. So that's why Prometheus and Covenant, it it put a bad taste in people's mouth because it got so far removed from the original Alien series and franchise that we liked, and that's okay, why and they're they're standalone. And for a lot of people, there for a lot of people, I mean, Alias, uh, that one, that one, and. Uh, <laughs> Covenant, Covenant, I can say that. Um, mm -hmm. yep. it, they were the people's first introduction to the series, you know, and it's it just, it was kind of disappointing that creatively those movies went in that direction, mm -hmm. which wasn't as good a watch as Alien or Aliens. It wasn't and, watchable. And you know what? The fact is, Alien was straight sci-fi, and Aliens yep. was sci-fi horror. So there's two genres, like sci-fi action horror too. Sci-fi action horror, right? So oh, yeah. there is there is multiple genres that 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 franchise stretches across, or that story stretches across, and it's just it was just really disappointing to the people who were just coming in at the time of Covenant or the other one. Um, 
the p word <laughs> the, the p word uh is <laughs> it's, it's sad that you know they just weren't introduced to the fantasticness that we were when yeah. we started with aliens and because aliens was so good we had to go back and watch alien and yeah. it, it, it introduced us to sigourney weaver you know it's and one of the first one like i mean when it comes to like movies and their sequels aliens yeah. was one of the first ones where people can arguably say like i mean can i did i enjoy that second one more than the first one you know like you can argue i mean how i mean it's toe to toe because i mean they both bring different things but i mean both brought a lot and then the disappointment of alien 3 and i'm not mentioning alien resurrection because it's not worth yeah, mentioning no, alien resurrection we don't need to mention, you know yeah, no sense. but romulus i don't know i i like pd is new to me i don't know what his work is like and you you're mm -hmm. praising it you're shailing it you know you're telling me that really loves it for me, for aliens to work, for this one to work, not only does uh, Fidi have to be really, really good at what he does and not too over the top and stick to somewhat of what Alien and Aliens is all about, but still add his own flavor and flair into it. And mind you, this is coming from someone who's not seen his work. So this would be the first time I've seen anything that he's done. And I expect mm. it to be so good that it makes me want to go back and watch his other stuff. Um, so I can tell you, uh, obviously, he, uh, like I said, Evil Dead remake. It was 2012. Did you see Don't Breathe? No. See... Those okay. are titles of the movies I usually stay away from because they scare me. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna lie. He is has a horror backing. Um, he, I mean, with Ghost House Pictures, if you know Ghost House Pictures, it's a lot of like raw horror. Is you're, uh, what you're it is. You're telling people that, <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm saying even you know exactly. I'm telling you like, hey, these. I mean, in in my you house, know. these are the movies we know. Um, you but you it's have a, lot that is a little bit more plausible so, than the Evil Dead, like Evil. So and that tells Dead. you. I can tell you that, like, um, that previously we you know, sci-fi, sci-fi action, and Alien was a, had a bit of a sci-fi horror. This yeah. is absolutely going to be a sci-fi horror, uh, yeah. uh yeah. mix, and so that's one of those strap in if that ain't your genre. Uh, well, but it's that? you're gonna is be satisfied. Yeah, and I don't want to build up too much because I'm a guy. I, I don't. I don't need this to be a disappointment. I want this to be because it's going to be one of the first standalone in the canonical like storylines of things going on, minus a Sigourney. And oh, what it means for Feedy is just that mm -hmm. people like me who haven't watched his previous work because the titles were too scary. Yeah, like if this is good enough, I might look past the title and be like, okay, you know what? Let's just settle in. It, how bad could this get? At least let me watch it to be mm -hmm. like, okay, this might become one of my new favorite directors going forward. Like this could be a guy that I'm like, okay, you know what? He, a film in his hands, you know what to expect and you know what he can bring. And you may not even like that, the horror genre, you know, may not like the shock of it, but you can, exactly. but if it's done well, that's enough. Right. Yeah. And and that that's really all I'm asking for. I don't feel like anybody's really going to touch Sigourney Weaver's um, level of superbness when it comes to being a leading lady in this film. Mm, nobody leads like Sigourney does. Films. I mean, I what's her name? I, was it uh, Isabella? I, mm -hmm. She's got the look. So I'm... I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I'm behind her. I'm a, I'm behind her. I'm like I'm gonna watch. <laughs> I, I'm gonna root for her. Um, but uh, in a uh, Katie Spaney, yeah, she she won a freaking Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you know, that's not typically. But, but she does also doesn't have Oscar. a recognizable <laughs> name or anything. So so that alone tells you. Like, I love a good actor that is a good actor and has proven like a award winning good actor, but you still don't know him yet, and yeah. you're waiting for that movie to be like, hey, guess what? I've been in town this whole time, you know, like, and I'm hoping this is it for them. I've never seen as anything as Bella's done, but I know she has the look. She has a, she looks like she could be the younger version or this generation's version of Sigourney. So like, you got to give it to her that way. And I feel like when it comes to mm -hmm. like leading ladies in sci-fi action flicks, um, they all are, you know, a, a very slim brunette. Um, if you look at Sophia <laughs> Butella in Rebel Moon, um, mm -hmm. And slim lady, I don't. I, a a waif of a person, yeah, yeah. Waif of a person, but you know, it's a, they carry big guns. They carry. And big you know, guns. And, 
And I do yeah, appreciate that, that where it's not, um, for hard. example, yeah, where it's not like, okay, a wave of a person and then suddenly she's throwing punches that put people through walls and you're like, oh, no. okay, well, so that superpower was involved. But right. uh, for this one, it's like, it's intelligence. Yes. Intelligence and courage are what, are what really guides those type of characters. And I love a good, a good actress that, that brings that. Right. And the act, I mean, I don't know if they're fighting, but there's definitely going to be conflict scenes because, oh yeah. You know, you, you can't do with these movies without the conflict scenes. And it just, if you're right, for it to work, like, I have to believe that this slim, small, petite woman with a <laughs> gun is going to look a big, scary alien dead in the eye mm -hmm. and not, you know, overcome her and nerves to somehow fight it smartly and not use brute strength or brute force which mm -hmm. realistically we know she's not going to have. Uh, and we've in this fit, this franchise has proven that brute strength doesn't work against these, these aliens. Right. Um, it, it only gets you so far against these aliens because you got to be smarter than them. Exactly. And you got to be more brave than they are. And that's you know? where he comes into play. I'm like, how smart is yeah. he going to get? Like how good is his puppetry? You know what I mean? Like, what are you really going to do? So I, I literally have high hopes for this film. Not yeah. only because I have such massive respect for Ridley Scott and what he's done, you know, mm -hmm. with the original and the fact that it's look, 30, 40 years later and <laughs> here we are and again. Still uh, here, you know, 40, 45 years later, still right, here. Right, but it's the, it's, so I have high hopes and I want to give it, but, you know, I'm also just, you know, really apprehensive and just trying to keep everything in perspective before yeah. I watch it and be like, give it too high of, um, give it too high of like, oh, yeah, I got to see this movie. I got to see this movie. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Like I'm a diehard fan. I'm a diehard fan. And then you see it and you're just like, oh, well, that was a little bit underwhelming. Yeah, it was you a know? bit lukewarm. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, I mean, out of, the, out of the three franchises that we've talked about, I mean, like, this one is the one that I have the most promise for i think i most hope for because yeah. it has it looks like they're putting enough behind it for that you know where it's like okay kingdom of the right uh, of the planet of the apes you better have a heartwarming story uh, story to to justify this new franchise and like ghostbusters like a uh, frozen empire it's like okay you're leaning real hard on movie 40 years ago then you're putting out something new worth watching like let's you know and so Jared, it's a tale of three franchises. Why did you have to bring up the Planet of the Apes again? Like I felt the tears because my tear ducts are filling up. I oh can't... no, you, I can I can suck that tear right out of you because talking does. about having a lead character that you're like you're not gonna be able to throw punches <laughs> like you may need to. Let's talk about Liam Neeson, oh. our old our Irish friend Liam Neeson. Oh my God, just the vibe killer. I know. <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I really, he has a new one coming out, Saints and Sinners or something like that. Um, is that what, is, it, is that the name of it? Oh, yeah. In the Land of Saints and Sinners. Yeah. And, okay. So but that came out last year, actually. It, no, is it? Is yeah. It, okay. Well, with, it says, with, well, since 2023, it may have been May, but it may be coming out soon because <laughs> obviously last year was a special year. So, well, it's, 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 it's Liam. It's Liam. Mm -hmm. And, Okay, so it's the Liam. I mean, he came out with a great, um, uh, what was it, Colbert, like on the Steve Colbert show with his Easter Bunny auditions oh. this weekend because we're we're shooting this on Easter weekend and hilarious. Uh, I mean, because Liam Neeson doesn't do comedy, so when he does comedy, he does comedy as Liam Neeson, which makes it funny, and because he knows he's not funny, but he that's what makes it funny. And but now he is. Two years older than my dad. He is 72 years old and he's still coming out with action movies. And well, he looks this poor man. He looks he looks he appropriately. He looks like he's aged appropriately. He looks like, really, like, <laughs> like you could tell he's had a little bit of Botox or something and some fillers there and there, but he looks like a good 72 years. I think that's just called growing a beard. That's a <laughs> <laughs> Just, um, no, he's actually seventy-one. To be honest. Um, oh, I'm, oh, I'm aging him too soon. He's yeah. He's, he's still got the rest of this year to age. Yeah, but you, you give him back his year there, Jared. Yeah, give right. Him. He's earned it. I know. Um, 
when the states and sinners come out anyway they're actually saying that this is you know the critics are giving this one a really good rating which is great because it's broken his record of his last several movies being rated in the low giving crit, giving critics conniptions of yeah. how bad it was and we're talking about wildcat retribution actors and athletes you know that was, was, that, was that no that's a music video sorry um <laughs> yeah marlo like, he, like everyone was yeah. asking, like take me back to 93 when schindler's list was a thing like you don't even have to do action anymore liam it's okay we're fine we understand yeah it's like you you've know? proven you could you did fine it, it was with taken six i mean Taking it back, six. like whatever. Like, I mean, who else did they take? Taking five, the new batch. Like, come on, took, man. Took his granny or his nanny at one point. Like, it just they He's went running out of ideas like, of people taken, to take from him. Yeah, I'm like, Taken was good. Taken two, great. I love the relationship fun. between him and his daughter. It, it, yes, it was there. Yeah, fun. It, it was. It, it justified its existence. Yes. Why do they always go through with the third one? We could stop at two. It's, it's so because neat. they offer that good money for the third studio is always like always <laughs> that's why there's always a third is because they offer some money and the actors are like you know what i miss hanging out with that cast and crew let's do it again yeah 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 no um the honest thief although i love the cast i think that's the one that he co-starred in it with um no that was with kate walsh uh there was one that he did with january jones uh that i think was really really good um mm -hmm. But, I mean, he's had some really good action flicks. The Commuter, I'll give him The Commuter, too. Like, that one wasn't overdone. He still gave yeah. Liam Neeson, who is this? Yes. You know? that got a, got, a certain, got a certain set of skills that makes me a nightmare for people really? like you. Where did you yeah. get this? <laughs> <laughs> he still gave us that. That Irish accent. That <laughs> 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 yeah, was enjoyable. But there was just so many. It's just like you know where were his agents and his managers it's why weren't they advocating for him speaking up on this behalf and be like you know this is a senior citizen at this point let's not do this to him <laughs> like he can't you know, do it he's anymore earned his rights to get some good scripts guys let's just let's find it come on he's still yeah exactly everybody forgot that he was a good actor i mean and when he did a guest appearance as qui-gon jim during the uh the obi-wan uh, miniseries on disney that was yeah. fun because he got to see him like that's right he was a really good like he was a good Qui-Gon Jim, which is its own, If in the Star Wars world, I mean, Qui-Gon Jim was a very cool and important character, and yeah. Liam Neeson played him wonderfully, but you did, you got very minimal uh, screen time, apart from, obviously, Phantom Menace was the one movie that you got out of him, but he w I mean, he played that really well, but you didn't get any more of that, and that's why, you know, it was a fun guest appearance on Obi-Wan, because it's like, oh, man, I wanted to get more of that, but now it's, uh, uh, but that outside of that, yeah, it's like, Hey Liam, you don't you don't have to do action no more, man. You're still a good actor. Like you can still like you know you can do a monologue, man. I've seen this guy do monologues before. And like, his monologues are funny. Yeah, you know his monologues it's, are super duper funny. Deadpan, yeah. Because yeah, it's it's out of himself, and he's good at that. He's good at taking the piss out of himself, like, and that that tells you that he's he's down to earth. He's a good guy, and so it's like. Okay, Lynn, you can hang up the action bell. You proved yourself. You don't got to do anything more of that. I mean, I, I want to give it to him because he's just one of those guys. I, like, I remember watching Excalibur for the first time like 10 years after it came out. And I was just like, oh, my God, this guy is great. Didn't know his name. Didn't want to know his name. But I was just like, he's great. Then I kept seeing him in other things. And I'm like, you know, I, I, if, if it's a Saturday afternoon and uh, I just I, I want to lay in bed and relax all day, well, then I, I can pull out a series of Liam Neeson movies and just be completely satisfied. Like, even he bad. has a deep catalog. He this does. man has he made really so does. many damn movies and TV series that he's appeared in, too. Right. It's he 150 acting credits on IMDb. You just get to the point of where, you know what, you actually start liking him as an actor that everything in the movie around him, the script, the production, the plot, the villains, the other, everything around him can suck. But you like him mm. so much that you're just, you continue watching it. And that's what a lot of his movies have been like up until now. So this is mm -hmm. why, I, you know, like the fact that he is a career actor, he is in his golden age and he's mm -hmm. still betty white in it 
yeah. all up and down are still bringing it. He's still mobile, you know. I, like I want whatever he puts out there to be good at this point. Like he, he's a tentpole, absolutely. He's, he's our Cicely Tyson of action movies, and like I, I'm just like really tired, sick and tired of seeing the disrespect of oh, it, well this got a rotten rating, and this got a um, this movie got a rotten rating, and critics are hating on this one. It's just like why put him through that then? Action yeah. movies are hard to make. I don't care how many stunt doubles you have. They're it's hard. hard movies, if especially when you're the leading man, like I was saying earlier, 12, 16 hour days. Like mm. it's a commitment. Like it hurts. At this you point, hurt. At this point, if you're gonna put the man in the leading man roles and you're gonna give him action flicks and you're gonna surround him with whatever he needs to uh, you know, make sure that he gets the job done, give him a good script. That's at the very least. He's yeah, earned, come on. He's earned it. He's definitely like, earned it. And I'm so excited for uh, the land of saints and sinners. And I, I want to see it because it, it, besides him being a good actor, I just want to see him in a good movie. Yeah. I want I want to see his, his latter years padded with good films and good acting. Ooh, like he wow. doesn't have to rely on the action anymore. I feel like he, that became his wheelhouse um, in the mid 2000s on, but you can steer out of it now, you yeah. know, like you can, you can go back to the good quality drama, man. It's okay. We love you, Liam. We love you, Liam. Hearts. 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 Yeah. Hearts. You fine okay. Irishman. Hearts. <sighs> nice a little lopsided, but you know what I mean. You yep. know what I mean. Yep. There yep. you go. There yep. you go. He's there got go. it. He's got it. He's yeah. Yeah. Liam. Love the Neeson. Love the Neeson. Thanks, babes. But speaking mm -hmm. of people giving him giving out bad ratings. Right. Who what? are we to to give out bad ratings? Who is anyone to give out bad ratings? Uh, I'll do. Ever it. since Siskel and Ebert. Um, who? There has been no one, by the way. Siskel and Ebert were the last, were, I mean, they were like late 80s, early nine, early to mid 90s. There was no two opinions greater than Siskel and Ebert. The TV, the cartoon series, The Critic, which I believe may have been also another WB. Um, I love that series. You can watch them on YouTube. Yeah. 100% I think there was only two seasons but honestly like growing up it felt like there were like four or five but that was um the critic was a pair as a parody of mod of Hollywood at the modern Hollywood at the time and different right, movies right. and everything funniest thing in the world and Siskel and Ebert were absolutely mentioned all the times because obviously the critic he was a movie critic so he was you know like riffing on Siskel and Ebert but n now that we look back what qualified Siskel and Ebert to be the critics that they were. What gave them such, you know, like a credit accreditation that they like they could have made or broke like made or broken your movie based on their ratings. And if they were mixed reviews, that was even better sometimes because then you went to theaters because you were like, let me see what the controversy is about. Right. Like they were tent poles in terms uh, speaking of tent poles, they were tent poles in terms of what made a movie. And if they were both thumbs down, who that could have been the death death sentence of yours, but who no, is it now? I, what, what does it mean for what Chris? They did, what gave them the credibility, um, which made people believe them? It was not because they weren't much different than any other like food critic or no, no uh, difference at all. The newspaper. It's just that they were plucked from the obscurity, and their last names, um, you know, immortalized. <laughs> Cisco and Ebert. You could say Cisco and Ebert. Yeah. You may not even know who they were, and you know Cisco and Ebert. Right. They were immortalized for that because I feel like they had personalities that were very. They were critical. They were. Mm -hmm. They were succinct, but they. It was just also very. They were humble. In their even handed they didn't they didn't they weren't egotistical even when they had mm. a bad review like, and i had to youtube some of their old um some of their episodes of their show but even when they had a bad review mm. about something it wasn't just oh well this is this is shit like it, it, it was <laughs> i would have loved that review by the way well, cisco's like man this movie's just shit man you know, <laughs> <laughs> just never said that. You know there wasn't yeah no at all it was just a really well thought out um 
nuanced reasoning as to why mm. this movie didn't work in their opinion or yeah. why it did. And I feel like people needed that type of uh, lividity to be like, oh, okay, well, maybe they do know what they're talking about. It was like being recommended a movie by a friend. Yeah, certain point. but 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 a friend that studied film and like you know a friend that knows what they're talking exactly. about exactly and yeah. because they were so good at what they were able to produce and the fact that their production of their show was just so simple, it was just simple. like they got them in a, them in a theater. Then they're just turned to camera sometimes, you know, and like was it? <laughs> exactly. it, it they got the topic. Uh, they got the uh, the title of just being experts in their yeah. field. Like they were the original thought leaders, but they were the thought leaders of film and what made a movie good. And that was just mm -hmm. because of their their personalities, their characters and how they came across on character. It wasn't because they were anything special or anything different. No. But then you have things like Rotten Tomatoes, where it's just, you know, people who may be misinformed or people who may not be as as critical and not critical in a bad sense but critical in a good sense of what they're watching and mm -hmm. you know just may want to you know cause controversy or get clicks or move for likes or get picked up by the blogs on rotten tomatoes saying well this is good or this is crap and you know you need to watch this and with no substance behind it and people yeah. and people go to we don't have cisco and ebert are both gone god bless their souls mm -hmm. we have very rough few, endings for both of them. Yeah. Other than our people in our lives that we can go to to be like, okay, should I watch this? So like, or make the decision by watching the trailer and so on. So if you want to see a review or you want to see what other people are thinking about a film, unless you have your TikTokers that you follow and your TikTokers are really only reviewing things that are on streaming, no one's actually doing theatrical releases, you have yeah, to go right? to Rotten Tomatoes. And you go to Rotten Tomatoes and it's just like, how... Can I trust the veracity of what these people are saying? Like, were they paid off? Was yeah. There, what was their What was their influence? Even, what was the reasoning they, behind it? Right. Do they even know? Um, do they? Did they even watch the film? Right. Or 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 are they? Even or did did they watch it? But did they like? like see deeper like other than the the surface level or, or are they like rating like, right. what, they like qualifies, sorry. what qualifies them to type 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 post what is and see that that's the part that i don't like is because it's the internet as we all know um used to be the source of all information but it's just turned into a cesspool but the thing i don't like about it is it's the hyperbole it's a one star it's a five star yeah. it's either like the worst thing you've ever watched or it is just better than schindler's list and like and it's in the middle you don't get the only middle you get maybe is 2.5 is oh, i didn't like it i didn't hate it 2.5 and what Siskel and Ebert would do is they would say, I'm going to give it a four, but that's because, uh, that's because I liked this part, but it just subtracted from this one part. They had reasoning and substance behind a, a, a vote. For for example, I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, last night I watched Wonder Woman 1984. I never got around to watching it. Finally, it was on TV was last night. I was like, hell yeah, let's watch 1984 Wonder Woman. Not a, on the whole, not a great movie. It was despite everyone's best effort, there were three great performances in that movie, and it was Pedro Pascal, it was Kristen Wiig, it was Chris Pine, and the three of them gave three great performances despite being in a mediocre Wonder Woman movie. And for that reason, I would rate it a certain, I would give it a certain rating, whatever. Uh, but it would, but it'd be like with reason. Like I would give it this for this one, but I have justifiable reason of things you will like about it, things you will not like about it, sure. and which is any movie. That's every movie you're ever going to watch is things you're going to like about it, things you're going to disagree about it. And a, what a good critic can do is tell that and tell it why it's that of like, OK, this could have been better. But on the whole, you will let you will enjoy it or like go watching it through this lens. You will enjoy it through this, whatever. And that's what a good critic does. But sometimes when you get your Rotten Tomatoes, you like I said you get one star, hated it, five star, best thing ever. Like in and, and there's no real substance in between. There's no reasoning of like there's no where, where's the pluses and minuses. Where is the, the pros and cons of this movie? And then 
we don't have that anymore. Like even Gene Shalit, who is a wannabe Siskel and Ebert that came, uh, they were around, is around the same time. Like that's what uh, the old film critics of yore would do is give you reasonings like, oh, this was great because of this, it was not so great because of that, and so then you get the average, you know, thing of that. And that's what a critic does, but. Do we have that anymore? Like, who gets to be that anymore? Like, um, do you yeah. get do you give like the wrong review of a good movie, and then there goes your credibility, and you're not nobody believes you anymore? Well, that's exactly it. Like, what is their reason yeah. behind it? And like, how can we trust them? What they're saying is based on a, any type of oh, we love movies. Mm -hmm. Do we? Do we really? <laughs> like why are you saying like do you want to marry him like yeah. with Cisco and ebert you knew that they were there to review movies give their some their honest if not somewhat it give their somewhat but if not honest opinions on it but mm -hmm. they weren't um or at least they didn't come across like the type that they were being influenced by by the forces that wanted good reviews for certain for certain productions and wanted bad yeah. reviews for other ones. It, it just didn't come across political in that way. But with Rotten Tomatoes, it's just like, number one, can I trust what you're saying? Number two, do you have any type of qualifications to be saying what you're saying about these films? And number three, if um, since this is all kind of so anonymous and we've all become keyboard warriors in a sense, mm -hmm. um, why are you it's doing this? Why are you saying what you're saying? Like, yeah. What weight does your opinion carry versus any, literally anybody else's? Right. And I mean, we depend on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, a lot of us do. A lot of us moviegoers want to see what other people are saying about a flick before we decide that we're going to go see it. Me, my personal process is I, I hear about a film, I mm -hmm. watch the trailer, and then, you know what, if I'm still a little bit unsure about it, I'll go check the reviews. Yeah. And the place where you go check the reviews is basically what Cisco and Ebert was to uh, uh, was to people when they were on TV, which is the source to get a review about films. And if Rotten they, they had Tomatoes, weight, their opinion yeah. had weight. If yeah. Rotten Tomatoes can't keep it genuine, yeah, then I mean, really, what are we doing out here? Then they've just become another Yelp, another Google reviews, where it's like, okay, another Amazon reviews, right? All right, I just have to go with the general consensus, knowing that there's going to be a lot of bots, or there's going to be, like I said, one star, five star, which you could drop off either one of those. Like, give me the, what were the middle ones? Like, the middle, people with middle opinions, like two to four star, they had reasons for those, those, you know, those ratings, right? Like, that's, you know, sometimes where I could, uh, where I'm like, all right, why did you give it four? Why did you give it two? You know, we have to conduct our own little mini investigations to be like, okay, yeah. what's the actual truth about this thing in order to make a decision. And it's just like, I mean, if, if you're the source, like verify your sources, you know, at, at this point, Rotten Tomatoes, the site, you're, you're a journalist. The, the site itself is, is journalism and you need to verify your sources. And if your sources are shit, then you have no right to be doing what you're doing because there might have been movies out there where people would have gone and saw, but because it got a bad Rotten Tomatoes store and they said it wasn't fresh, you know, they didn't go see it. And then that's when you get, you know, three, four years later, the cult following uh, bump that you can get sometimes with the movie of like, oh, hey, why was this panned at the time? This is actually a really good one. It's because the reviews were mixed enough or like weren't genuine enough that people on the consensus didn't view it worth going to watch. And then, and then it gets dumped and dropped and forgotten. And you become a Reddit thread and people have to exactly. here's later and you, you're a hundred, you're a hundred levels deep and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and just the thing of like, cause back in the day you would go with word of mouth of like, Oh, I went to the theater. I went and saw this totally worth watching. Da da da. Go to, go to see right. it. Cisco and Eva says, go see that. You, you, there was reason for it. Now, if you don't see a movie, you may never even know it ever existed to begin with, nor care because there's enough other movies and shows to go out there and watch that it gets buried. And so that's why uh, a review is that much more important nowadays because if you want, like if you put out something really good and valid and it gets mixed reviews, one star, five star, like, you know, there's not enough talk or buzz about it, it can just be dumped and forgotten. And you don't get that chance until 
years later, you know, you're in a package uh, sold to a streaming site and then people get to rediscover it and say like, oh, wait a minute, I finally saw this movie that came out four years ago. It's actually really good, you know, and then you get the backup cold following. But by then, like the director didn't get a second chance because it didn't like their original that that movie didn't get, you know, the original sales that they were looking for. Or the actors in that film didn't get their credit they deserve because reviews were mixed and then they got shuffled on to the next project, you know? And so that's, that's why sometimes like actors and directors and writers need like good, genuine critics or reviews to give them the, the, the quality, like grade that they're asking for, that they need to see whether, was this a flop? Is this actually good? Is this in the middle for different reasons? You know, like right. that's why you need a weighted critic system. And I think that's part of the reason why directors like Freddie Fede Alvarez are very grateful for people like Ridley Scott, because just mm -hmm. like, did he, I don't know what his previous movies did, but were people, were the critics, were, were the sources for a what movie reviews, were they giving him a good review? I mean, or did he have mm -hmm. to rely on his industry contacts and people who he knew to get his next job? And here yeah. we have, you know, which is probably one of the biggest things he's done to date in his career and like you said it's not just people watching these movies that depend on these reviews or like at least um accuracy in 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 these critics and what they're watching and why they've decided to rate a movie what they did but it's the people behind the scenes the people who actually made yeah. them is they depend on these reviews probably more than that because Word of mouth, it's much stronger marketing than a trailer in certain sp in certain cases. And, you know, if you've got people who don't who haven't seen your movie, who are on the fence of seeing your movie, reading reviews off the top of people panning your movie and then they don't go see it. I mean, that's like that's like manslaughter. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's the same thing. <laughs> it's just it's the same thing as murder. Like why? Why are you saying that? <laughs> no, I mean, it's also also to the point of a uh, um a movie's a movie until it has that that indie critics thing. You know, was I call them like the leaf the the leaf parentheses that you'll see. It was like the two like the 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 lee like the the branch with leaves the and lot. it has like won this indie film award yeah, or yeah, like yeah. won this film festival award. If it has a number of those like lee like those like uh like you know uh, things whatever <laughs> like oh it won awards at film festivals. I'll totally it's go check it out. Leaf. Yeah, exactly. It has those leaves in parentheses, those parentheses leaves. You yeah, know, this yeah, is yeah. like in, you know, Cannes Film Festival or like Jake's Film Festival, mm -hmm. like this horror film festival. I if you there. have enough of those on there, it's like that's the critic review of like, okay, mm -hmm. film festivals liked it. I'm going to go check it out. Right. Like it was Liam Neeson's movie we were just talking about. Um, the... What was the one um, in the yeah in the land of saints and sinners? I was like, okay, was, uh, as in the trailer, it had one of those parentheses that I talk about, those leaf parentheses. It says like for the Ireland Film Festival, I'm like oh, the Ireland Film Festival like approved this. Like okay, so like it was justified by not just you know the studio. It's like somebody else said it was a good film. Like it wanted right. you know that's the new critic you know um, the critic logos that you look for is have they won awards and like you know in these small film festivals. You know, the funny thing about the land in the land of states and sinners is that you were right. It was actually released in September. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was released in September, but the news is dropping on it now. Because it, it may have been like small release. Uh, I mean, probably definitely in Ireland. Uh, but then now it's like, hey, enough, you know, attentions garnered from different people. Or like we can now do a more worldwide distribution. Yeah. So it, and that just goes to show you. I mean, if you're going to talk about something. You know, just mm -hmm. don't talk. Which, uh, which, which again, uh, <laughs> pro uh, producers, can we can we have like a couple like at the bottom of just like those parentheses, like leaves uh, of just just made them up, just I make need, it up, you know, right? Just say critic box, <laughs> critic box awards have uh, have given this, you know. <laughs> but it's like the golden parentheses. Like if you have a, like a three or four of those in your trailer, ooh, you're film festival gold. I'm gonna go check you out. Yeah, but I'm just you know, and I'm just basically saying like if you're gonna leave a review, if you're gonna talk about a movie, if you're gonna do a blog piece or an article on a movie, this is not the time to believe your bullshit you know what i mean like mm -hmm. a lot of people you don't know who you're gonna reach you don't know who the audience is like at least give it a i don't want to say be fair and give it a chance i'm not trying to like spill no a naivete like that i mean but mm -hmm. you know at least do your due diligence 
and you know come correct and at the very least yeah your name like is if it if you're gonna put a review on something that's uh, always oh, like a um uh, ron swanson in parks and rec says like if i'm gonna write a letter of complaint i'm gonna put my name on it because i stand by my word on it and yeah. if you're gonna give a review um a review of a movie put your notes down put like you know put your homework down put the like uh, what was your work you know right. like what was your reasoning paid for, or if you're getting paid for it you know if you're getting paid for no. it just say hey i got paid to say it so here's some reasons to go watch this movie you right. know tiktok creators have to disclose that the fuck it is it's a paid partnership all the time like so you know yeah which again uh studios we will take money for positive reviews i just uh, want that to be known okay. we will take money for positive reviews sending so that... an email with my rate yeah, just go ahead. Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start low to just get credit, and then I'll then I'll move up from there. Right. right but right, right. <laughs> but then I'll tell you. I was like, hey, Sony Pictures just paid me a bunch of money to say go watch this movie. Uh, but but you know what? I mean, I I'm also I'm a Sony uh, fan for life, buddy. <laughs> but you know, and like, that's also what people, um, my friends, kind of don't like me. Uh, like say, uh, like to hear my reviews on things because I think any movie is watchable for different reasons. Right. If the movie is shit, I'm going to tell you why you should go watch this shit movie because I'm like hey go laugh at this acting go laugh at this scene you're not going to believe they pulled this off you know every yeah. has, every movie has a reason to watch it but it doesn't mean it's good and watchable you yeah. know but it, but again it's uh, so that's why I always put my positive spin on uh, on uh, different film reviews like like I said Wonder Woman 1984 go watch your Pedro Pascal go watch your Kristen Wiig go watch your Chris, uh, Chris Pine those three those are three performances that are worth watching and then you're going to laugh the rest of the way because it's like what happened with that storyline but Pedro again Pascal every movie has it's, it's worth reason. watching. Pedro Pascal is an actor that... That was it? Oh, great. and he did wonderful. Yes, yes. I, um, I'm i going to leave... I, I, I'm I partial to Gail Godot for other reasons. I, I, no, I have nothing against Gail Godot. She, uh, had, she, had no, she was I, crushed I under the weight of that, that tr- uh, script. I see what you're saying about that. It's just like they could have had the original Wonder Woman. We could have got the history uh, or her story, her origin story, and you know we could have been good with mm-hmm. the Wonder Woman, and it would have been fun. I was so happy with Wonder Woman. Right. That was I. Uh, um, mm. The Wonder Woman eighty four. I mean, it was it was definitely a little all over the place. Uh, just they, trying to do a lot. It, they popped back and forth. I mean, Gail looked great in every. Yes, scene. she did. They gave the ending a nice, tight little story. Be a good person ending. This is what was, Wonder Woman would do. It had a very much like a um, a corporate presentation video right it like was like a power, it was a powerpoint in the theatrical <laughs> yeah, form. a lot of stuff <laughs> you're just families get together what you're like i'm the- sorry did they just the world was in chaos like three hours ago did we just wrap that as like did everybody forget or did that not happen like do we what would what, I, I wasn't even you didn't wrap up that storyline right you know no i mean like was it a superhero movie no i feel like it had superhero elements but it wasn't yeah. necessarily a superhero movie i i think that they were trying to give different messages with it and i mean okay it was a little choppy it was a little rough if you're a diehard wonder woman fan you're gonna watch it and you're going to enjoy it at the end of the day but did we did it surpass wonder woman in its greatness i don't think so no it didn't no it didn't it's Um... not it's not one of those movies that i curled up at two three four in the morning and watched with my head under the blanket and all the lights off like i was ashamed of it Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> <laughs> but again it took me this long to watch it and i waited until it came up on one of my movie tv channels mm-hmm. as i was scrolling and it was already five ten minutes in and i was like oh cool i haven't seen this let me just watch the rest right. of it and i didn't miss that first five ten minutes exactly. you know <laughs> but again so so what this boils down it, what, so what this boils down to is we are the new critics that everybody should be listening to because we have our reasonings and justification for our rating system. Right. And um, if you, even if, you know, if you, if you want to give us those types of accolades, I like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll joke around. Um, yeah. I'm not, I will joke around about why a film is good, about why a film is bad, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But you also got to think about the people that are going to be watching it who are not like you, who don't like the same things that you don't that you like, and yeah. like yeah. give them that reason, balance, explanation as to why it would probably be more for them than it would be for me. Like, yeah. until I knew Poor Things was a freaking comedy, 
I was just like, I'm not, <laughs> I don't care how much I love Emma. I'm not watching this. <laughs> yeah. Know? But I'm like, okay, well, it's a comedy. I might try it out. <laughs> oh, it's a dark set there. All right. Yeah. Well, there's the more Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you, you, you just got to listen and you, you, you've got to, you got to make sure that the people that you're listening to know what they're talking about or at the very least care about it. Yeah. Do you care about what you're talking about? Yeah. Well, and on that note, I feel like that's a good way for us to wrap up this episode. Um, yeah. As yeah. anybody who's watched the first couple episodes of notice, we are missing Sarah, sadly, but that's also because we're, we're recording this on Easter weekend and she's justifiably with family. We've abandoned family to be here, but Sarah decided to be with them. And, um, but she will be here next week and she is going to be talking about, um, Ooh, we got a trailer to watch drift. And then she also has a number of things she wanted to talk about, but she wasn't able to get here. But we want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in, uh, watching this. Either you're watching this right as it comes out or three years later, you stumble upon on YouTube. Hi, nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, oh, peace. Yeah, right. Hey, stick around. Um, <laughs> my name is Jared. This is Andrea. And we will see y'all next time here on Critic Box. Bye. Podcast for movie watchers. Bye.